Okay, today we will continue with the lectures. Okay, remember last time we defined what's a PID. So remember, uh, suppose uh, R is a competitive ring with one, competitive ring, let's say, then uh, and let's say uh, A is an element, uh, uh, ring with one, let's say, with one, and A is an element of R, for example, then the ideal generated by A is RA, as we showed before. So namely, this is R times A such that R is in, uh, this is an ideal, and this is the principal ideal generated by A, principal ideal. Principal means it is generated by only one element. Ideal generated by A. And if we have two points, let's say A and B in R, then the ideal generated by A and B would be uh, R times A plus S times uh, B such that uh, R is in R and R is in R, S is in R again. Okay, that's the ideal generated by, uh, generated by uh, A and B in R, of course. Okay. And we define this, we gave this definition, R is a principal ideal domain. If every ideal is, uh, every ideal, of, uh, so it's an integral domain, first of all. Uh, if if R is an integral, if R is an integral domain, and if uh, I guess we give this definition like this, PID, an integral domain, yes. Uh, uh, Okay, so R is PID if R is an integral domain and if uh, every ideal is principal of R is principal. Namely, it is generated by a single element, every ideal. And the example was uh, Z is uh, PID and if you have a field, that's the PID, because it has only two uh, ideal, namely zero and the field itself. Zero is generated by zero and the field itself is generated by one. Simple. Okay, next. So I will, now I will show this about, I will pull this about exercise, namely, this I will write as a theorem. theorem. Let F be a field. Let F be a field. Then this uh, the polynomial ring on X is a PID, principal ideal domain. Okay. There's a proof of this statement. So, so that I be an ideal, ideal in f of x. Uh, if I is zero, if I consist of only zero, then uh, it is generated by zero. So that is principle. So that assume, uh, let's assume that uh, I is not zero. So let G of X in I uh, be a non-zero polynomial, 
non-zero polynomial. Polynomial or with smallest degree. Smallest degree. Now remember degree of, in this case, degree of g of x is greater than or equal to zero, right? And degree of zero is C minus infinity. So if degree of zero is, if degree of g of x is zero, then it is constant. G of x is constant, constant, and it is not zero. So that uh, then, but then C is is a unit in uh, a unit in f of x. Uh, so it's a unit in uh, f. It's also a unit in f of x. So therefore, uh, the ideal generated by C is everything. And uh, this is uh, the ideal generated by C is contains contains also also C since C is in I, so since C is in I, C is G of X, then the ideal generated by C is inside I, but this is F of X. So therefore, uh, I is uh, F of X. Which is C or, or one also. Okay. So that is this principle. So suppose now degree of G is positive. It's a non constant polynomial. So, so clearly again. Uh, the ideal generated by uh, g of x is inside i. The reason is that g is in i. And we will show the converse. So let uh, f of x be in i be a polynomial. Be a polynomial. And by the, oops. Let f of x be a polynomial in G. We will show that this is in the ideal generated by G of x. Uh, so by division algorithm, that we proved before, uh, there exist, there exist polynomials polynomials Q of X, R of X in F of X, such that we may write F of X as Q of X times G of X plus R of X. Namely, when we divide F of X, uh, F of X by G of X, the quotient is g of uh, q of x. This is q of x, and the remainder is r of x. Where the where uh, degree of r of x is less than uh, the degree of g, degree of g of x. Remember, you know, the r of x might be zero, and we will show that this r of, r of x is zero. Uh, in this case. Uh, so then, uh, then R of X is, we may write F of X minus Q of X times G of X. Now, this is in I, F is in I, G is in I, so that Q times G is in I, so that R is in I. But the also the degree of, uh, degree of R of X is less than the degree of G of X. So, and the g of x is the smallest non-zero polynomial of uh, uh, so remember b is 
the the, the degree of g is uh, uh, we choose g of x so that the degree is the smallest other than zero of course it is the smallest degree smallest degree uh, polynomial in e other than zero non-zero polynomial polynomial in i so therefore uh, since r of x the degree of r of x is smaller than the degree of uh, g of x the r of x must be zero namely its degree must be minus infinity so therefore uh, so this tells us that f of x is from this uh, uh, equality f of x is q of x times g of x but this is inside uh, the ideal generated by g of x so therefore every element of uh, every element of f sorry i is inside this ideal so that means i is inside g of this ideal the principal ideal generated by g of x so therefore uh, i must be g is equal to g of x so namely does every ideal does um, Every ideal, every ideal in f of x is principal. Thus, therefore, oops, therefore, f of x is the PID when F is a field, of course. That is the end of the proof. F of X is a PID. As we claimed, uh, remember it says the theorem says if F is a field, then F of X is a PID that we showed. Just like in the uh, integer case, Almost similar. So here's an example. So therefore, for example, if you look at the polynomial ring over R or rationals, since uh, Q, R, and let's say also C of X, since these are, uh, since R, Q, and C are uh fields this is uh they are pids these uh these are pids <laughs> okay so here is an another example none example let's say none example in fact so zx so this theorem does not rule out that if if we have a if, if you have a field we say that the theorem says if you have a field then it is polynomial ring is PID but sometimes perhaps if you have an integral domain which is not field it still it that might be PID we don't know uh, but here's an example Z is an integral domain and this ZX is not uh, uh, is not a PID domain and for this we need to show that uh, we need to give one example uh, an example of an ideal which is not principal so let's consider this ideal consider the ideal the generated by generated by two and uh, the polynomial x so that i is 2mx. Remember, this is uh, 2 times f of x is plus x times g of x, or h of x, let's say, more to say, say h of x, where uh, f and g are polynomials with integer coefficients. 
Okay. Now, suppose that it is principal. Suppose that I, namely 2x, is principal g of x. And we will arrive at the contradiction. So since 2 is in I, then 2 is uh, in g of x. So that means we can write uh, 2 as uh, g of x times some another polynomial, so let's say q of x times g of x. Okay, now degree of uh, 2 is 0. Oops. 0 is the degree of 2, which is the degree of uh, qx times g of x. So that is multiplicative, remember, this is the, degree, the ad additive degree of f of uh, q of x plus the degree of uh, g of x. But now, since they are, uh, so that the, both of these degrees must be zero. So therefore, degree of uh, uh, g of x is zero, degree of q of x is zero, so that g is g of x is equal to, let's say, uh, <coughs> g of x is equal to a, and q of x is equal to b, for example, or uh, okay, in my notes, I wrote that the way around. Let, let me write that this way. Okay, q of x is equal to a, g of x is equal to b. Uh, so that these are, they are not zero. So that two is equal to a times b. Uh, so that, so that uh, b, they are non-zero integers. So a, b are integers which are not zero, non-zero integers. So that a is not zero. B is not zero. So therefore, uh, B is either plus or minus one or plus B is equal to plus or minus two. If B is equal to, if B is equal to plus or minus one, then uh, G is G is equal to B is, uh, is a unit. So therefore, the ideal generated by the unit is everything. Right. If an ideal contains a unit, then it is the whole ring, as we know. Uh, so that uh, so that one is inside g of x, and we assume that g of x is two x, right? So that that means, i.e., uh, we may write one as two times some f of x plus some x times some h of x. This, this is true for all x. If you write x is equal to zero, you get one is equal to uh, two times f of zero, where f of zero is an integer. But there's no integer, such an integer. Uh, But there's no such integer, so that we get we get a contradiction. This is a contradiction. By this contradiction, so the contradiction is that two times another integer is one, and there is no such integer. By this contradiction, uh, b is plus or minus two. It cannot be plus or minus one. Uh, so if uh, plus or two or minus two, it doesn't matter. Uh, so since, since two is the same thing as minus two, uh, we can assume, assume that B is two, B is two, so that uh, two times, uh, two, the ideal giant by two times X is, principle two, which is then, uh, but then x is equal to, x is in this i, uh, which is two, so that uh, x is equal to two times some f of x for some x. 
for some f of x in z axis, right? For some polynomial. So, so this is something like a zero plus a one x plus blah blah a n x to the n. All these a i's are integers. Okay. Uh, now, but if you write x is equal to one, when you write x is equal to one, you get one is equal to two times f of one, where f of one is an integer, f of one is a one, uh, if you take it like this, f of one is an integer, so that an integer times two is one, that's, that's a contradiction, yeah, by this contradiction, this contradiction, Um, G cannot be equal to two either. G of X uh, is not is equal to plus or minus two either. So therefore, uh, as a result, this the ideal two X is not principal. So it is not the uh, uh, it's principal ideal. So therefore. Therefore, we have an ideal in Z of X, which is not principal, so that Z X is not uh, a principal ideal domain, it's not a PID. Of course, some ideals might be principal, of course, there are many principal ideals, but not every ideal is principal, so that this is not a princip principal ideal domain. Next, okay. Okay, now we will talk about the grids, common divisors. Uh, let me choose uh, like this. Grid with different colors. Grid is common divisors. Let me change the colors. Colors, how is colors? How do I change the colors? Okay, okay, back to the our original colors. Okay, here's the definition. So remember, uh, before this, remember if we have a ring. R, uh, then A divides B means B is equal to A times C for some C, right? And so let R be an integral domain. So I think of real numbers, uh, integers, sorry, and let a and B, uh, A and B be two elements in R. If, if there exists a C in R such that C divides A and uh, C divides B, then we say that C is a, then we say that C is a common divisor. Common divisor of A and B. So example, in any ring, uh, in any ring, uh, so that R be an integral domain, of course, integral domain again, always, as always. So, uh, and if you have an X in uh, R or A is in R, then A is equal to A times one. So therefore uh, A divides A and one also divides A. So one divides everything and every element divides itself. 
also uh, zero is equal to zero times a uh, <laughs> so there exists a non-zero but i guess here we should assume that the c is not zero okay we should assume that the c is not zero so we don't want to divide zero by zero okay so, so that uh, a divides when a is not zero let's say a is not zero uh, then a divides zero. Every element, every non-zero element divides zero. Because zero is a times zero, a times another element. And uh, so here's the definition. The, an element d in R is called uh, a greatest common divisor. greatest common divisor uh, which uh, we write like this greatest uh, let me greatest common divisor of uh, of uh, a and b and written as greatest common divisor of A and B is equal to D. If, uh, if D divides A uh, and D divides B, so D must be a divisor of A and B. D must be divisor of A and B. And uh, if uh, C is a common divisor, if C is a divisor of if C is a if C divides A and C divides B uh, B then C divides D. So C is a if C is a common divisor then it divides D. Okay, here's an example. As we know, if you take as R to be the integers. If you take A to be 28, and B to be 21, then, uh, then B is equal to seven, is the greatest common divisor. Let me write like this, greatest common divisor. Uh, and also D is equal to minus seven is also a greatest common divisor, which Okay. Mm. Okay, here's a proposition. Proposition. Here's a proposition. Suppose I is a PID. R is a principal ideal domain. And a and B are two elements such that A is not zero or B is not zero. Then A and B, uh, A and B have uh, uh, greatest common divisor D. Um, it's common divisor D such that uh, then it is unique up to uh, up to associates associates in uh, R and it can be ex expressed as and D can be expressed it can be expressed as D is equal to the greatest common divisor of A and B, which is X times A plus Y times B for some 
x, y in R. And uh, remember, uh, a x is associated uh, to y means uh, x divides y and y divides x. And that means x is equal to y times u, where u is a unit also. Okay. Remember, Let's prove this statement. In a PID, uh, there is a, so in the above example, seven and minus seven are associated. Seven is minus one times minus seven. So they associate. So, so let uh, I be the ideal generated by A and B. Uh, the ideal generated by ideal generated by generated in R, of course, by A and B. Uh, then uh, I is uh, U times A plus V times B, where U and V are from the ring. Since R is PID, since R is PID by assumption, uh, there is a D in I such that uh, I is equal to D, principle ideal. So let D is equal to, so that we can write D is X times A plus uh, Y times B. So we can write uh, that element like that, this element. So let's check that if it's the divisor. So we will check that this D is a greatest common divisor. Since A is in I, which is in D, that means A is D times E for some E, so, so therefore D divides A. And similarly, B is in I, which is D, so that we may write D as D times some B prime. So that means D divides B. So that uh, if you look at the code of our definition, we said, we said that here, we said that uh, D, D is a good common divisor if it's a divisor and any divisor divides that number. So we showed the first one. We showed that first one is true. So we showed the first one. And second, so let uh, C divides A and C divides B, and we will show that C divides D. Okay, if C divides A, since C divides A, then C divides A, we may write uh, C uh, A as C times U for some U. And since C divides B, we may write B as C times V for some V where U and V are uh, from the ring. So then, uh, then we may write T is equal to AX plus BY. Uh, A is C times U, uh, X times C times U or CUX, let, let me write like this. It is come to the ring anyway, it doesn't matter which way you write. And instead of B, you write CVY. And when you factor out C, it is UX plus VY. So therefore we have D is equal to C times UX plus VY. So that means C divides D. So therefore, therefore, D is a, uh, D is a greatest common divisor of uh, uh, A and B. And the Y, it is unique. So let uh, unique of the associates. So suppose we have another greatest common divisor. So let uh, uniqueness. So let me write uniqueness up to associates. So let 
T1 be another uh, another uh, greatest common divisor of A and B. A and B. So D is uh, D is greatest common divisor. So let me write like this. D is the greatest common divisor of greatest common divisor of A and B. And D1 divides A and D1 divides B because it's a great common divisor, so it's a divisor. So, so the D1 divides uh, D. And also, since D1 is the greatest common divisor of A and B, and D is divides A, D divides B, so that uh, since D1 is the greatest common divisor, D divides D1. So therefore, uh, D is associated to D1. Okay, they are associates. D and D1 are associates. And that's the proof of uh, the, the proposition. Now here's the corollary of the statement. Uh, corollary. So Z is a, uh, remember Z is an integral domain. Z is PID, since Z is PID. So that A and B are in Z with uh, a squared plus B squared is not zero. One of them is not zero. Is not zero. Then, greatest common divisor of A and B exist. And it is unique. Uh, so that uh, in the, as an example, as above, if you take A to be 28, B to be 21, then greatest common divisors, uh, greatest common divisors of uh, A and B28 and 21 are only seven and minus seven. These are the only numbers. Uh, these are only greatest common divisors. Okay, as we showed before, we know, or as we showed before, every prime element, prime element in an integral domain, integral domain uh, is irreducible. We proved this before, irreducible, but the converse is not true. Converse is not true in general. And we gave an example, and but in the PID, the converse is also true. However, in, P, in a PID, the converse is also true. Also true. So, uh, so that let me before this. So, since uh, if you look at this ring A plus B squared of minus five, where A and B are integers, remember. Uh, this three is is irreducible, but not prime. Prime. So therefore, uh, this R is not a PID. It's not a PID. After this uh, corollary, this will follow, and the corollary is. Uh, 
probability of proposi proposition. If R is a PID, if R is a PID, principal ideal domain, then every irreducible element is prime. Irreducible element of R is prime. So if you look at this example, where three is irreducible, but not prime, therefore R is not a PID. Uh, okay, there is a proof. So suppose P is irreducible. So I hope I can finish this. Let me suppose uh, P is in R uh, B irreducible. Suppose it's irreducible. And let P divide A times B. We will show that it is prime so that A B is P times U. So if P does not divide, if P does not divide A, then the greatest common divisor of P and A are one since, uh, since P is irreducible. Okay, oh, 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 oh. I have some more time, so I will finish here because I, uh, I probably uh, time is not enough to finish this proposition. And I will finish this uh, corollary in the next uh, next uh, in the next video. Okay, I have still some time. <laughs>